Hi there. This will be a quick one to wrap this series of videos on creating a reasonably simple CI-CD pipeline for a .NET library. On the previous videos we saw how to define the build using Cake, publishing the resulting binaries to NuGet and the code coverage report to Core Roles, and then running the build on AppFair and Travis CI to have visibility on how the build and the tests are running on multiple operating systems. Now we'll wrap up by checking out the code coverage report that's published on Core Roles and adding some build information to the project's GitHub page. So let's start with coveralls. So register and all that stuff and then we get to the home page that normally would be empty but because I have already created the project there's already some information but if we if I didn't have this done already I could just add to add repos then all the repositories that I have public on github are here I could just toggle which ones I would want and uh, it's done. I already have one enabled, so let's get back to the home page and then go to the project page. So this is where we can see more information about the build. We have here the token that that's used in this case by the cake build to publish the report to to coveralls. We have the percentage of of code coverage. Then number of builds, files, all that information you can check out. So over here, latest builds all with the same percentage because the latest builds I was just fixing app veyers and travis and badges and coveralls. So no code was touched, so tests remain the same. And over here we can drill down. This was already drilled down, but we can drill down on the code in the folders. This is percentage by, by folders. And then we have the various files, percentage per file. But m probably more interesting than seeing percentages is what is covered. So we can go to the file and see the, the details. So the green lines are the tested ones, the red ones are not tested, the other ones are not really testable. So we can see um, my tests are running through most of this. The main parts that are ignored are the exceptions, so I could probably improve the tests to test this, or, uh, test this as well, but it's not that bad, it could be worse. And that's about it for coveralls. This is what it gives you. The percentage, which I say it's not that important. If because if we're, you're trying to get 100% test coverage, it doesn't guarantee that this, it's all correct. But So I think the this detail and this drill down is, is the interesting part. And that's it for coveralls. Now let's check out some some badges information. So what are these badges I'm talking about? Is the, it's this. We we see this in lots of projects and it's interesting. We can see the, the status of the builds on in this case on AppVar and Travis on the master and develop branches. You could see if they were passing, failing or still in progress and not as important but doesn't hurt to be here the code coverage uh, percentage. So how do we get this? Heading to AppVayor, we can go to the project settings. And if we go to the badges section, there's the information right here with an example for the master branch. That's uh, what I'm using. And if I want to develop branch, it's just changing this. And uh, that's it for AppVayor. For Travis, I didn't really find a place with this uh, information directly, but we can just, there's a badge right here, so we can copy the image location. And if we see this, it's here. We can just use this on, uh, on the readme. And finally, coveralls. It's also like a player very easy. We have the embed option here with a bunch of options. We can just choose the one we want. In my case, I'm using the markdown one to put on the readme from github and uh, 
it look how this check how this looks let me here to visual studio code and it's right here I created a little table for the app Vera and Travis stuff it's not very really readable here but it is on github so the image for master and develop for app Vera and then for Travis master develop and coveralls master develop and the end result is the one we saw over here a nice little table and another one really easy to check out so this is about it for the wrap up and uh, just an outro so the end result of this series of videos or the project that I presented through the series of videos is that when we push uh, when we make code changes it push as long as we're on master or develop uh, a build is started it's run on multiple operating systems uh, running tests and the build and all that stuff the code rock coverage is is published and uh, a new get package is all, also published as long as we are we're on the master branch and this is all automated good because uh, or we would have to do it all manually or We'd probably not do half of it because manually it would be a pain and we would ignore it, not, not going into troubles to do that. So having this automated is really cool. There are probably lots of improvements and that, that could be done to this, but it's already much better than doing everything manually. And uh, another thing we saw that was pretty cool was uh, defining the builds using C Sharp and Cake the out of the box stuff works great and if something is missing we can just code it so yeah i think this is these are the takeaways from this series of videos hope the videos were useful and if feedback you have throw it my way please and uh i'll see you in the next one